Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Let's talk about the waffle plant. Purple waffle plant in this case. This is the Hemigraphis alternata. There are multiple varieties. Actually, there are a lot of different varieties out there. But this right here is generally the most popular. You can see it's a beautiful house plant. Nice green, almost metallic -y foliage with purple undersides. They're a really popular house plant. They're fantastic for terrariums. Overall, they're fairly easy to care for. I mean, I found them to be pretty easy. Sometimes there are some issues with them that I'll get into here in a moment. First, we'll kind of go over the quick care. Oh, and I don't want to forget this one. Over here on the right is just the normal, typical Hemigraphis alternata. I think this is Exotica, the purple waffle plant. And then this one right here, I believe believe is called Snow White and it's just a variegated version it has nice light creamy variegation that fades into pinks and purples and the care for these is it's pretty much going to be the same maybe a little bit less light for the variegated one though just to be safe but a quick rundown on these hemigraphis here they have a nice low growth and they'll spread pretty wide you can put them in a hanging basket and they'll look really nice for you they like medium to high light they are moisture lovers don't let them dry out for very long like a nice organically rich moisture retentive well-drained soil fertilize sparingly like maybe once a month during the active growing season and that's only with a liquid fertilizer liquid fertilizers are usually the safest way to go i'll elaborate on that more later on in the video they prefer a high humidity which makes them a great option for terrariums and they are clean air plants and they are non-toxic i have also seen this plant listed as being synonymous with hemigraphis colorada in my experience the hemigraphis have always been a pretty easy to grow house plant they aren't too terribly finicky pretty low maintenance but they don't like to dry out and you can see this one has dried out quite a bit. I went, went ahead and let them both dry out for the video thinking I would do a time lapse, but these aren't really time lapsey type plants. They don't really like pop back into form kind of like a photonia would. So I'll just go ahead and put them in here and give them some water. For me, when these plants do get bone dry, which I mean, obviously that's something I avoid, but it happens sometimes, I'm human. When that happens, I prefer to do a small watering from the top just to kind of get things going on the plant. Just a gentle drink from the top and then I'll put them in a container with a little bit of water in the bottom, just like this, and let them kind of wick that moisture back up to fully saturate everything. But I did want to go ahead and let them dry out a little bit so I could kind of show uh, some ways to tell if the plants are thirsty. So you can see here on this leaf, see how it's cupped and crisp and folding up. That's the plant saying, hey, I'm thirsty. You could also tell before I watered the plant, the top of the soil was a light brown color and it felt very, very, very dry to the touch. That's, a, I mean, that's a really good way if your plants are thirsty, if you touch the top of the soil, it means they need water, right? That's you, dry means they want water. Because they are a plant that prefers high humidity and a lot of moisture, it is best to make sure these get watered when that surface of the soil dries out. But here is just to show you that these were bone dry and they're okay. It's not ideal, but look, they're fine. As long as it doesn't go on for very long, like, you know, you maybe have a one day grace period and that's okay. A lot of plants don't even give you that. Most of the complications or issues that I've noticed when people ask me about these plants and need help with them usually goes back to uh, fertilizing and light. When it comes to light, they are a plant that likes bright light, right? But sometimes, like particularly if you have one that's variegated, like the Snow White right here, then uh, that's one where you need to be more cautious with it. Start it off in lower light and work its way up to higher light. I do know of people who have planted these in full sun, like direct sun, and they've been okay. That was outdoors though. Sometimes things are a little bit different when they're coming through a window. So if the growth seems kind of long and spindly and just overall kind of odd and awkward, then go ahead and consider moving it up to more light if you don't think it's getting enough to begin with, or look at how the plant's being fertilized. That's usually where things really go wrong here. But while these plants actually are pretty sturdy, nice house plants, they have delicate roots. There can be burn and stuff like that. They're going to want things to be more organically rich for their nutrients. So basically, I'm just saying any fertilizers that are salt-based, sometimes that can affect their growth and their roots. It can burn their roots up a little bit because they do not like salt. If you live on the coast, this might not be a plant for you outdoors. 
just saying, just to be safe might be something to keep away from there because they're really sensitive to salts building up in the soil. And that's why a liquid fertilizer is usually the best way to go because you don't usually have to worry about salts and things like that. And it's a good idea to dilute that fertilizer by about half. So only half strength once a month if you want to fertilize more often than that. Like I'm someone who I like to keep my fertilizing regimen pretty consistent so i do a quarter strength every other week twice a month and uh, only with liquid if these are potted up in a really nice organically rich soil you may not even need to fertilize them they're not very demanding of fertilizer and then if there's concern about a fertilizer being used on them like maybe they're just really really delicate and giving you a lot of trouble then consider getting a soil amendment like um biotone or the plant tone or any other just nutrient rich amendment you can add to the soil or compost even better and then just work that into the top of the soil if you do that like i don't know i'd say at the beginning of the growing season and then halfway through then you probably won't even need to fertilize these period because just from giving them that top dressing of compost or plant tone or whatever you decide to use that is going to in itself provide plenty of nutrient for the plant they're not going to need fertilizing and i have had people ask me about pruning on these before and that's a, that's a question that's always confused me a little bit because it's not they don't really grow vertically right they just kind of they spread and crawl and like i said they'll drape over the side of a hanging basket or a pot which can look very nice uh some people don't like that look they're going to want to keep them more in this just sort of upright bushy habit right here which is fine so i i assume when someone asks me about pruning these what they mean is the outward growth and not the upward growth because if you prune these leaves right here that's just that's not i don't know that doesn't make sense to me i'm just going to go ahead and make the assumption that those questions are based on the outward growth of the plants these spread and grow through little bitty underground rhizomes they're very thin and dainty and delicate i was debating lifting this out so you can see it a little bit better but i don't think this plant's established enough to take that risk if it's the outward growth that you want to prune off you can just take a pair of snippers and just cut them off right at the node that's right where the growth meets the stem that's not going to hurt the plant and will potentially encourage more growth back into the middle of the plant to help fill it back out and they're very easy to propagate on that note you can take whatever it is you prune off of them as long as it has a little piece of node and then you can place that right back into the moist soil you can put it into some water or you can take any uh, bits of the plant that are growing outward and out of the pot and you can wrap them back around and just kind of gently poke the node just push it right down into the soil and that will root out and keep going you can divide them up that way and then you'll have lots and lots of plants they're very easy to propagate in that regard i prefer to be able to do things through example here but neither of these are really big enough to show you what i'm talking about there so i apologize if the when when they get bigger i'll maybe just do a separate really quick little video on that but it's it's pretty easy it's not something that should be difficult for very many people if you live in a really dry climate and you do divide them up and you're concerned that it, you can put them in something where you can put a little dome or a plastic bag over them to help hold them some of that moisture because anytime you propagate a plant that's a time to be concerned about moisture loss through the foliage and this is a plant that, like I mentioned, really just loves high humidity. So if things dry out very much when they don't have access to water or nutrient because they've just been removed from the plant, they haven't rooted out yet, that'd be a good time to make sure that they're covered. There's something in there to help hold in the humidity. As far as pests and diseases are concerned, the main thing to look out for with these is root rot. And then with insects, white fly, scale, mealybugs. If in a drier climate, then uh, spider mites might be something to watch out for. However, spider mites tend to not like a humid environment and these prefer humidity I'm not saying you have to live someplace humid for them to do well it hasn't been my experience anyways but even though they prefer high humidity as long as they stay watered well usually they'll be okay maybe if you live in like a high desert climate where the air is bone 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 dry then that's probably going to be different for you but uh where i am like the humidity in the winter is like usually about 40 percent which they seem fine with you can tell a plant needs more humidity usually by there will be a brown outline along the edges of the leaves and on the tip of the foliage that just means the air's too dry or the plant like really missed a watering and got really thirsty and maybe started to lose a piece of foliage it just happens sometimes it's okay don't worry just go ahead and water it it'll be okay while uh, yellowing of the foliage usually means things are a little bit too wet when you start to see it from below and it's working its way up and it's happening rapidly and the foliage is soft and tender that might be an indicator that things aren't going great down in the soil maybe things are a little bit too wet there could be some rot or something starting to happen so just have a look at that soil see if it's feeling really 
wet, <laughs> essentially, and then lift it out and dry it out if that's the case. Maybe give it a flush with the diluted peroxide. I think like a tablespoon to like a cup of water should do the trick to help pull some of that fungus and stuff out and then keep an eye on it. Make sure that the bottom of the container isn't in direct contact with the water, which I know this is, but that's because I'm trying, to, I'm rehydrating right now. That's not normal, right? I wouldn't normally have them like that. Perhaps you have them sitting in a humidity tray or something like that. That water could be wicking up into the pot. The pots shouldn't be in contact with water that's in your tray below the plant because that can cause root rot, right? Don't you just love when a plant's like, I'm thirsty, but don't let me sit in the water because then I'll just die. Now that's actually Actually, that's because of anaerobic action going on beneath the soil. There needs to be a good exchange between anaerobic and aerobic bacteria to keep things nice and happy down here for the roots of the plants, for the all the nice fauna that helps break down nutrient to feed the plant. You don't want just one or the other. And if there's a direct contact with that water, things become way too wet and you start to lose some of that aerobic bacteria and then you just the plants start to die because things aren't going right down there. Things are off balance. Speaking of balance, I don't know why in my head this leads to balance but these are a plant that do tend to be on the more acidic side with their pH anywhere from 5.8 to about 7 is a good place for them so sometimes maybe if water is really alkaline that could cause some issues it can disrupt nutrient uptake and whatnot now, I have pretty hard tap and I've never had an issue with that it's about everything I have read on these plants in the past and now does mention them preferring a more acidic soil. So I'm just putting that one out there. It's something to consider if you're having trouble with them and you don't know why nothing's making sense. Maybe uh, get a test kit for your soil, test your pH, see what's going on there. In fact, these plants like moisture so much. They like humidity so, so, so much that you might even see them at your pet stores, sometimes sold as an aquatic plant for your fish tank. They can be submerged for a short period of time and be okay, but not for very long. So it's not really something to put into your fish tank. That doesn't really make sense to me. It's sometimes the companies that sell aquatic plants, plants that grow out of the water grow a lot faster. So sometimes they'll push those out as aquatic plants, even though they shouldn't. It's just faster for them to get them out to the consumers that way, even though it's setting them up for disaster. It's a pretty bad thing to do, and I wish that they would stop. There are actually a fair amount of plants sold for fish tanks at like the big chain pet stores that are not meant for fish tanks. You could keep them underwater for a little while, but eventually they're gonna die because that's not what they prefer. And the most common question I think I get about these is about the foliage being weird, the foliage being off. Usually that it's either droopy or that it's really long and spindly. Both of those issues can be caused by a multitude of problems, but typically, from my experience, that is usually from uh, too much fertilizer or fertilizing at the incorrect time. So uh, it's good to stop if you move your plants outside or really just in general to stop fertilizing this plant. I would say at least six weeks before the fall comes around the fall before fall happens because the plant, the trigger that's going to be in there to tell the plant to keep growing is still going to be there. Even though the angle of the sun, the hours in the day, the intensity of light, all those things will have changed just a few weeks later. And then that can cause weird spindly growth. And that's just one of the things with fertilizing them. If you over fertilize, they can get wilty and droopy. They uh, will have leggy growth sometimes, or sometimes it'll just overall be dieback on the plant in general. So like I said, stick with a liquid fertilizer or use something to just amend the surface of the soil. That's fine. Basically, overall, they're not demanding of a lot of fertilizer. So it just don't worry about it if you don't have to. Yes, back to the droopy foliage that can be caused, like I said, from excess fertilizer or at the wrong time of year too much water or too little water. It'd be an insect issue. Be sure to check thoroughly the bottoms and the tops of the foliage. Oh, and then of course, maybe they're not getting enough light. That can be a problem and cause the foliage to grow out and then get kind of droopy and sad looking and being root bound. Maybe they need to be repotted. Maybe the roots have filled things out so much and there's just so little left in that pot that when you water it, it's just not getting the nutrient that it needs. And hydration, more than anything, because there's just not enough going on in the pot anymore. It's just roots. You need some soil in there. Unless you're growing them hydroponic. I would imagine most people aren't growing these hydroponically, but it's you could if you wanted to. Okay, so despite everything I just said, which made it possibly sound like this is a complicated plant to grow, it really 
isn't. I just like to be thorough because of the questions that I've gotten about the plant in the past. Because usually if somebody is talking about these, it's usually because they're asking me a question about something going wrong. Like I said, and it's usually related to fertilizer, the amount of sun they're getting, or the amount of water they're getting, which is pretty typical of most plants. Those are kind of the big three that things usually come down to. And of course, typical houseplant stuff. Avoid drafts, mix, you know, rotate them. If you remember to, that would be good. If you notice they're growing in one direction, give it a turn so that can even that back out. It's a little unrealistic to recommend somebody rotate their plant like every couple of weeks if you have a lot of them, but if this is the only one you have, then you know, every few weeks just give it a little spin. That could make a difference if the growth is really wonky and uneven. Like I said, despite everything I just covered and talked about with the pH and the fertilizers and all those things, I like I said, I have found this to be a very easy to grow plant. When you think about it, if a lot of the issues that arise with this plant are from too much fertilizer, that's kind of the telltale sign of a plant that's not very demanding and easier to grow, right? Keep it simple. Keep it moisturized watered that is we're not talking about this isn't a lubriderm commercial use moisture meters if you rely on them keep a wooden stick that you can put down in there and if the color doesn't change when you pull it up it's definitely too dry but ultimately like i said this is a plant where if that the surface of the soil feels dry it's time to water it yep that's it pretty simple plant despite <laughs> everything i just talked about those are for people who are having problems with them which i think are kind of far and few between always be differences in how we grow our plants for me even though it's not very humid here during the winter time it's humid enough that i don't really have to struggle with it very much like at all it stays fine as long as i keep it watered well there is no shortage of humidity here outdoors that's for sure indoors kind of a different story but 40 percent being the minimum that's not too bad what are some of your experiences growing the uh, waffle plants i keep wanting to say purple waffle plant but that is specifically just this one right here the hemigraphis alternata i like i said i think exotica there are so many different varieties and like people have patents on the different varieties with them so it's hard sometimes to kind of say which is which unless it actually has the label this one was just labeled as purple waffle and this one like i said was snow white yeah comment down below i love talking to everybody it's always fun getting our plant nerd on especially with you know everything going on right now maybe a little mild distraction ease some tension and some stress right let's talk about plants for a while who's growing these in terrariums i'd like to know because i uh, had a terrarium plan you know i've been doing the terrarium tuesday thing uh, it's on a little bit of a hiatus right now. The reason I actually picked these two up a few months ago was to do an a larger terrarium. And uh, because they're not, I don't know if I'd consider them a marginal plant, but it's because they can take a really high amount of moisture, highs, high amounts of moisture, then what I was debating was where to really plant them. I think if I'm going to do like a paludarium, which is a terrarium essentially that has like a section of water in it, it's part water, part aquatic, part terrestrial, to uh, probably line these somewhere near that water line. I think they would do well there, but I also kind of wanted to put them up on a back wall where they would spread and grow and take over. I don't know. What do you think? You have them in a terrarium, paludarium? Let me know. Oh, and there is a lookalike. I mean, in my eyes, it's a lookalike, and I always think it's fun when there's a cold hardy alternative to something tropical looking, and that is the Ajuga Reptans. At least in my eyes, it's a lookalike, not necessarily maybe to other people, but there are, it's a bugle weed or bugle herb, I think is the common name, and there are some varieties that have darker foliage to them, like the chocolate chip. There are variegated varieties that do look kind of similar to the Snow Queen, but they stay nice and short. They're hardy zones 3 through 10, and they will spread and fill out very nicely as a ground cover. They're really pretty plants. Kind of neither here nor there, but it is because, like I said, to me, it's a lookalike. I, I think they look similar. If, if you like the plant, but maybe it's not for you, for your indoor growing, a ajuga might be an option. It's hardy zones 3 through 10. A lot of people could put that outside and enjoy it as a perennial with a little bit less maintenance because it's in the ground, right? Okay, time to go. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. It feels really weird saying that right now with everything going on, but it's true. I do. I hope. Hope everybody's doing well and keeping it together. It's like, it doesn't feel weird to say, I, I mean what I say now more than ever, but it just feels weird to say it when I know that it's such a hard time for so many people. That was what I was trying to say and still talking despite saying it's time to go. What's wrong with me? I don't know. Welcome to my channel. This is what I do. Hey, on that note, <laughs> my social media is linked down below. Don't forget to do the whole YouTube thing. Hit that notification bell. 
if you subscribe, that way you know when new videos come out. YouTube, they don't, they're do not they not always great about telling people. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.